Hey, you know, yesterday I was um, I went to my grandson's uh, graduation from he's, he's becoming now a, from the a fire, firefighting academy in San Francisco. He's a San Francisco firefighter now, and I'm very happy for him. And he's worked so hard. And my and his mum and dad, my my son and uh, a daughter-in-law, worked so hard. And I'm so 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 happy for them all. And uh, I got a great family my son brought to me and um and uh, i wanted a i'm sitting out here back in the yard here i've um, been watching the bird uh, the feed its babies i made a little video for facebook before but i wanted to comment <clears throat> i just wanted to share something with younger people i guess i'm getting old now i was 74 a, a week ago <clears throat> and i was thinking about the world you know when I first met my American, my first wife, American she was, and we're still good friends, and um, she's the mother of my kid, my son, and um, and uh, when I first met her, and, and the guy I met her through, her ex-boyfriend, and another American who I still are in communication with every once in a while, um, we were, I was traveling, it was like 67, I traveled to the south of France, I bumming around in Europe, that's what's nice about being in Europe in a way and um, my ex-wife she'd gone to in 71 I'd been a, a couple of times but in, in 70 uh, it was 68 I think she went from London to Joburg overland you could get these trips overland from London to Johannesburg she was in Uganda when I mean took over she was in Mali and I had pictures of her uh, where there there was a young uh, black girl that was uh, an African girl that was over, I would normally have said African, I've been in America for a while, African girl who was touching my ex-wife's hair because uh, uh, they'd never seen, she'd never touched a white person's hair or maybe seen a white person. And then she was in, um, I forget where it was, where she, uh, pygmies, she got a pygmy belt, she swapped a sweater for it with this pygmy and uh, you know that small tribe in um, in Africa, southern, central southern Africa I think. and. Um, but she went all the way to Joburg, you could do that on these trips. I went in 70, 71, I went to, she was back in Europe, and I went, she went to, uh, to um, she went to Kashmir, I remember. She stayed on a houseboat there. I went uh, to Turkey, I was in Istanbul, I went from Istanbul down through uh, uh, Iraq, took a train to uh, Baghdad. Uh, went through Nineveh which I, uh, and Babylon. I remember the train stopping in Babylon. I'm thinking, my God, I'm in Babylon. I'm not a religious person, but Babylon and Nineveh, I remember them from the Bible uh, and, and stuff, and I was just fascinated. We'd stop, the train would stop, and people would come and sell you water and tea, chai, little, little, little glasses. The Arabs uh, drink the chai. In Turkey, too, they did the same. And it was lovely. And I uh, got to ba Baghdad, and I went from Baghdad a couple of weeks later, or a week later, right? You know, when you get so, get older, you can't remember the time. I had a good time in Baghdad, perfectly safe. People were kind to me. Um, then took a bus to Basra. I was with a couple of other guys. And in Basra, me and my buddy Jimmy, I wish I could find him, we thought we could get work on oil fields and become like millionaires, you know? But they wouldn't let us into Kuwait. I had no money. And I don't think they were letting blacks, Jews, and people without money in there. <laughs> I'm not sure. But um, that's what I heard. But hey, I ended up having to go to the British Consul and getting repatriated from Basra. And what they do is they, they take away your passport and give you money to get home. And they gave me papers then for certain countries I could go through. They take your passport. When you get home, um, if you pay your, pay your money back, they'll give you, you can get a passport back. That was the second time I did that. I did that with my, my one of my closest old friends, Martin Allport, when we got repatriated from southern France. We had no money, we were starving and so forth. But when I think about, think about going all across Africa like that, you could do that. You could, as I say, Rebecca stayed in a, a houseboat, I think, in Kashmir. Beautiful place, you know. And Kashmir is, a, is, a, is in a crisis and a, in a horrible horrible situation because of colonialism, British colonialism. When they partitioned India, they created Pakistan, well at that time, East Pakistan and West Pakistan, now it's Pakistan and Bangladesh. They created that, the British colonial powers, and they just left out uh, uh, Kashmir. I think it was a lawyer actually that drew those boundaries. 
And so Kashmir is um, it's like a it's like Northern Ireland in this huge province. Part of it Pakistan, part of it uh, India. Same with Punjab, part of it Pakistan, part of it India. A lot of people don't know, particularly in this country, the, the partition of India. There were six million displaced, a million dead, and and, and Muslims flew north. And, 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 and Hindus and Sikhs flew south, like my Sikh English friend, his mother was born in Lahore, you know, terrible disruption, just like the Middle East today, and just like Northern Ireland, the British colonialism caused that. It's not, it's not an a, 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 a inherent in British DNA or English or Welsh or Scottish DNA or anything. It's a, it's a, it's a political question. But uh, young people today, especially in this country, it seems to me, it's the East Coast is a bit more, a bit different, but you know they don't, they don't travel, you know. And and one thing about Europe is, when I was in Berlin in 1999, I think I went to, I went down to Macedonia at one point. I can't remember, but in, I was in Berlin and I took a train to Krakow. You know, it's just nine hours. Got drunk on the train with Okochim. Poles will know about Okochim. It's a good beer. And uh, I stayed in Krakow, went to Auschwitz and visited there. And, but like, uh, I feel sorry sometimes for young people. We've got to, we've got to, if we've got to do what we can to give them a better future, you know. I mean, I, my grandson was there at this thing uh, the other day, yesterday. And then uh, I've got, um, I've got grandchildren, they're older, but other people have young grandchildren. You can't ignore what's going on in this world if you love your grandchildren. You've got to do something. The very least, don't shut it out. It's depressing sometimes, but don't shut it out because it's actually happening. I'm in my garden here right now, and I was watching the the northern mockingbird. She was she was um, didn't want to come down. I think it must be the same ones. I made a little video before, so I went inside for an hour and sat and watched her. And sure enough. Her and the other one, there's two of them, I guess they're, well, it could be a non-binary marriage or, you know, it could be a gay marriage. I don't know, mockingbirds, you know, I don't know. But um, they both would stand up there and they'd fly up here and they'd fly up there and they would survey and then she came in and she fed him some grubs, you know. The world is a beautiful place, but uh, let's not kid ourselves. Capitalism, I know people don't like to hear that, but the system, the global system under which we live the system of production will will destroy it to the point that humans won't be able to inhabit it anymore. Won't destroy the planet and its nature. But I feel positive that the working class will step to the plate and at some point uh, put a stop to this. It's a beautiful day today. It's nice.